Hi everybody, welcome back to Cliffhanger. It's number five already. Tim, as I mentioned before, was sort of uh, locking his wallet up. Drinking, starting to drink a little bit more in the bar. The room he and Jin were staying in, in the Narre apartments, were, was very dark and, as I said before, quite depressing. And he got a bit, seemed to get a bit of a rut. However, something pulled him out of that rut slightly. Another bar owner, just a little bit further down Soy 8, but inside, I think it was called Center Point. Also, love of bikes, had a customized one of these Hondas. And they must have met and, and chatted um, because suddenly Tim went off again and upgraded his bike even more with more stuff on it, engine tuning. He opened his wallet and he spent maybe another thousand dollars, maybe more, maybe two thousand. And it gave him a bit of a focus. It was a bit of a competition between these, these two bar owners, I think. Um, but that only lasted about six weeks. He, he got the bike even more customised, more noisy. and uh, But then again, he dropped into this little bit of a rut. It was, it was low season. There was hardly any customers around. You were fighting for customers to come in your bar. You started to try any trick to get them to come into your bar. Um, there was this like snooker and pool leagues around um, and quiz nights, quite a few bars tried different things but Soy 8 bars was nearly always music and loud music and lots of girls. They didn't have many girls in the bar, they had a few freelancers. Tim and Jin decided, they, they were rowing a bit, but they decided that they needed to upgrade their accommodation, that, that place was a bit depressing. And they went off and found a two bedroom bungalow. It was a couple of kilometers away up the other side of Sukhumvit Road. Uh, it didn't have a pool or anything, but it was a two bedroom detached bungalow. And it was about, it was a lot of money. It was nice, but it was a lot of money. It was maybe uh, 15,000 baht a month, which was a lot back then. They took that on and moved. Immediately, Tim seemed happier. Jin seemed happier. The rows weren't as bad, but the bar was losing money. It looked like Tim was understanding that you were going to lose money in the low season or break even. And it was just part of the, the system. A few months went on and on, and high season started approaching again. Customers started coming back. Tim at this time though was drinking and he was starting to drink more and more of the whiskey and I noticed him even drinking the loud cow, the white whiskey which is not great stuff he was still only coming in the bar 8, 9 o'clock at night but he was still there at 5, 6 in the morning quite often if I'd been out after my bar and I'd have wandered around and maybe dropped by and people saying he was, he was getting quite drunk every night that was, that was not good. High season approaching, as more and more customers coming in, he was grabbing, it was as if as he, he'd had to make the high season count now, it really had to count. So he had to grab every drink off every customer because it's profit. And through that high season, he was getting hammered every day, hammered. They were making money, Jin didn't care, he was hammered, she just seemed to be, the money was coming in, she was happy. They didn't seem to row because he was either drunk or asleep. He was never, um, even though they were rowing, I never heard or anyone say, or I never saw him ever raise his voice to, to Jin, or ever raise a hand to her. So all good, except the drinking. Before we knew it, high season was coming over again, coming to an end again. And that's, as that high season ended, the drinking continued. And the couple of times I went in, he was drunk earlier and through the night, which was very unusual for him to be drunk unless it was the wee hours of the morning. 
very unusual. Um, I, I come across a lot of people, bar owners, and, that were drunk, but it was the white whiskey. It was really getting him drunk. And I was a bit worried, and, and I actually said to him, and we had a bit of a falling out because he sort of told me to mind my own business, and it's just part of life, and he was fine. We, we, I still dropped in now and then, but he, he sort of pushed me away with his, his new drinking problem. Gin, just seemed to be gin. She was uh, eating, working, sleeping, putting money in the bank, so she was happy. With my bar, I was drinking a lot. You're always in the bar, you're always entertaining, and it became hard work. I saw Tim, I mean this is a guy from America who had the, the accident with a hand, who was a, a potential gold mine of an artist with the painting and the murals. He could have even became, become world famous. He was on the other side of the planet, he had no real family, and alcohol was taking control of him. You see this so many times in bars. People get caught up uh, with the dream of living in Thailand. A bar is one way of coming here and living and um, and getting that dream. But unless you've got self-control and you're really careful, either alcohol or drugs or the, the, the ladies can, can take control of you. And your life, before you know it, you start spiraling out of control and maybe spending too much money. Beginning of low season, I popped in and early one day, I'd gone out, I think it was lunchtime, and I'd gone into the bar, just maybe I'd gone into the sailor bar for some food and then popped in. Uh, and Tim was there in the daytime at lunchtime. I've never seen him there in the daytime. And he was sober. So I went and sort of said hello and he was fine with me. And I, I remember saying to him, look, are we still good? You know, you were a bit cheesed off the other night. And and he, he, he broke down. He absolutely broke down uh, into tears talking to me. And he said he's just so confused with life and he was getting fed up with money, he was getting fed up with his girlfriend. He he just was cheesed right off. And I remember saying to him, um, after he, he sort of started coming round from the initial outburst, that, you know, maybe the bar's not the best thing for him, maybe try and see if he can get back into the painting. Or tattoos like he looked at once. And a few other people had said the same to him, I think, you know, concerned. He had some regular customers coming in there. And they were a bit concerned. Um, and he seemed to take it on board. And he sort of, you know, said thanks for being a friend. And um, so we said our farewell and off I went. Um, week, two weeks maybe passed. You lose track of time in Thailand. Low season was on us again. I'd been, I'd passed round, saw he ate one night, didn't stop him, but I looked into the bar, I could see, and he was at the end of the bar, hammered asleep on the end, he was just passed out, I sat outside the bar, right against the wall at the back, totally out of it, I thought, oh dear, he started, you know, more drinking again, they had no customers in the bar, and apparently from other people I'd spoke to, he was starting to shout at some customers and lose his cool with customers, which is, you cannot do. You, you need those customers to pay your bills. And uh, yeah, it was, he was like going down a slippery slope very quick. He hadn't, I don't think, been spending the money he had. He had quite a bit of money from that accident. He had, what, $100,000 in the bank. Maybe they'd spent 10 or 20 on the bar and live in and rents and things like that but I don't think he'd been dipping into his money much apart from for the bike maybe he spent about 5,000 on that mm. yeah it was it was hard to watch 
and I believe a lot of you have seen it with people who've got bars in Thailand or anywhere around Asia you work in a bar in the entertainment zone you easily go down the drinking path and it's it's hard to, to curb once you start it's one of the reasons I gave up because I would have become an alcoholic and it would have probably been the end of my days if I'd have stayed low season it was very slow very slow lots and lots of uh, bars were closing all around people were just losing money and just shutting up shop and walking away and I thought Tim might um, but didn't seem to he stuck in there he just uh, was not giving up on it I never saw any effort from him to go into the painting or to try and do something along that maybe help someone else teach someone else how to paint bikes and things but which I think would have been great at mm. anyway Catch you on the next one. Bye for now.